hello folks welcome back to retired in texas this is alan it's been a while since i posted the last video uh, it wasn't planned that way but sometimes life just gets in the way of our plans um, my darling wife fell and broke her knee cap uh, to the extent that it needed surgery for repair and she's in a leg brace from ankle to groin <laughs> you know to keep it from moving so she's severely restricted in what she can do so i'm having to cover for her as best i can uh, which gives me a whole new found appreciation for what all she does uh, i always did appreciate her but now <laughs> even more so that i have to take up the slack for what she used to do she's a wonderful woman and we hope that uh, and pray that she recovers quickly but it'll be weeks yet before anything even starts to return close to normal uh, also after a long period of no rain all of a sudden we had lots of rain and in our particular situation once the ground gets saturated and then you get a heavy rain uh, we're prone to flooding and after a week where we got about uh, I want to say four or five inches you know spread out over days which was fine but then in one day we got a two inch rain and then later a five inch rain and that was just more than the ground could handle so i was out there fighting waters to keep it getting in the house which thankfully we did so we've gone past that roadblock too but that's what's been happening in our lives uh, this will be part two of the insect videos. I posted one part and told you that, you know, I was dividing it into two since I had so much stuff. So this will be number two. And I know insects and bugs and creepy crawlies are not necessarily everybody's cup of tea, but uh, not everything can be like furry kittens and lovable little puppies. You know? uh, everything is part of God's creation and part of the rich tapestry that he wove for us. They, they all have a purpose in life. So anyway, uh, sit back and we'll dive into it and see what else we can come up with. Hope you enjoy it. Our first segment covers dragonflies and damselflies. Both of these are predators feeding on other insects. When we think of predators in terms of their successes in hunts and kills, we normally think of big cats like lions and tigers. But the success rate of these is only about 30% at best. Dragonflies have an almost 95% success rate. Their unique eyes can see in almost 360 degrees, and they have the ability to project where their prey will be in flight and adjust accordingly. This is much like in bird hunting or skeet shooting, where you would lead the target and shoot ahead of it, so that the arrival of the target and the shot coincide. Their wing structures also allow them to fly in all directions, forward, backward, up, down, even upside down. This combination of flight and eyesight makes them the most deadly hunters. Blue damselfly is very common. It's the uh, brightest blue of all the damselflies, and it's common where there's any kind of still water. The larvae live underground, underwater, and look kind of like crawdads. This is the blue fronted dancer. It's called a dancer because it doesn't fly in a straight pattern, it weaves and bobs up and down. The common green darner. Somebody thought the body resembled a darning needle, so that's where it got the name. <laughs> it's one of the largest of the dragonflies and it migrates from the north down into Texas and Mexico. Cardinal meadowhawk also migrates long distances into Texas and Mexico. The males are bright red. They like to perch on stems and wait for prey to fly by. The eastern amber wing is one of the smaller dragonflies. They flick their tails to imitate wasps, I guess to fool anything that would 
eat on them. Eastern pond hawk is an aggressive one. It can take down prey as large as itself. Male and female look different. Four spotted pennant. Uh, this one goes as far north and down to the mid Atlantic states and then back to the Gulf, from Texas to New Jersey. Powdered dancer, called that because of the powdery grayish blue substance found on its body. Moths are related to butterflies, but for the most part, they're nocturnal. They fly in the dark, but they're attracted to lights. Why they're attracted to light is unknown. They usually have stubby bodies and their wings fold flat when at rest. This is called a tiger moth. This is the underside view. Their larvae are known as yellow woolly bears. This is a top view of the same one. The adults don't eat. White lined sphinx. We know this one more commonly as a hummingbird moth. Uh, anybody that plants tomatoes is familiar with this one. Their larvae we call the tomato hornworm and they do a lot of damage. The blinded sphinx moth. When their wings are open they display a large white spot similar to an eye but with no iris. <laughs> The banded sphinx moth ranges from Argentina to the southern U.S. The luna moth is probably the prettiest of all the moths, in my opinion anyway. The adults have no functional mouth parts. They don't eat. The rosy maple moth feeds on maple trees and oak trees, extends from Nova Scotia down to Texas. And the winner for the strangest name is changeable grass veneer moth. And yes, that's the way they rest with their head down and their tail up. Also known as a sod grass webworm, the larva. This is a Shizura caterpillar. I wasn't able to get a shot of the adult, but this is a caterpillar. Can you guess which end is which? The green area is the one near the head. Slugs, probably nobody's favorite, but you know, they're all part of the nature. Uh, the majority of land slugs have two pairs of feelers on their head. One is for light sensing and the other is for smell. Apple snail has a flap that they can close and seal off during drought and that protects them in dry conditions. And there's a slug. They move by means of a substance that they secrete from their body that helps them slide along. Spiders. This was very difficult for me to actually put names to. There are 3,000 different species in the U.S. alone and many of them with variations in shape and color. Uh, I know people find them creepy, and I do too sometimes, but uh, they're pretty interesting. One fact is they have no muscles in their legs to extend them. They're extended by hydraulic pressure. It's the black and yellow garden spider, sometimes called a zipper spider. 
with the web that it makes. This is a cellar spider. They usually hang motionless in webs and undisturbed disturbed areas like attic cellars or eaves. They gobble up tons of mosquitoes and flies. I think this is a fishing spider, but I'm not really sure on that. It was a hard one to identify. This is a grass spider. It has a type of venom that paralyzes insects, but it's harmless to humans. And this is a harvest man. Uh, we mo know it uh, more as the daddy long legs. And interestingly, it's not really closely related to a spider at all. It's more or closely related to mites. This is a nursery web spider. Uh, so-called because the females build special nursery webs. When their eggs are about to hatch, a female spider builds a tent-like web and places her egg inside and stands guard outside. This is a spiny-backed arb weeder, weaver, sometimes called crab spiders. And here are just some different types of webs we've seen. The varieties may be about as many as there are varieties of spiders. And now moving on to wasps. Uh, they're generally predatory or parasitic and they have stingers with few barbs that can be easily removed from the victims. Only the females have the sting. Uh, they can be either solitary or social and in fact most of them are solitary. They can have different types of nest, wood, mud, papery, the mason wasp, these are solitary. They build mud chambers, uh, which they stuff paralyzed caterpillars or spiders. And they lay an egg in each chamber and the hatched larva feeds on that. Red paper wasp, the most common wasp in Texas. And I can tell you from experience, they have a painful sting. Eastern velvet ant. Now this is actually a wasp, uh, sometimes known as a cow killer. Um, the female is wingless, so it looks more like an ant. They have an extremely painful sting. On a scale of four to five, they rate a high four. Yellow paper wasp. Uh, many people call these yellow jackets. They're not. That's a completely different thing. Uh, they build their nests from uh, dead wood and plant stems mixed with saliva. Their nests look like gray, papery, hexagonal chambers in which they lay eggs and cover them up. They do sting, but generally only if attacked or bothered. Uh, here are some young that have just hatched.
Well, folks, thanks for stopping by and spending a few minutes with me. Uh, look me up on Facebook. I don't post too much, but I do post something every Sunday morning called Reflections. Just a little something to get us thinking about for the rest of the week. Hope you all have a blessed day, and we'll talk to you later.